what is body fat? Oh, that's a great question, right? So, so as we eat, um, extra calories or even calories that we eat have to be stored somewhere. And so it's actually stored in a fat cell. We call it a, an adipocyte. It's a sciencey term to, to talk about a fat cell. And that's where calories are stored. So if you don't have enough body fat, it's actually as detrimental to your health as if you have too much. So, because you don't have the energy that you might need. Exactly, right? It's absolutely critical. And women, it's even more critical. Our brain somehow registers how much fat we have. If we don't have enough fat, we won't be able to become pregnant. So it's it's really, really important to understand how incredibly wonderful body fat actually is. I think it's also something that, again, we we think of it as being bad. But now we've discovered that it's like an endocrine organ. It, it actually has, secretes all of these wonderful hormones. It's really, really important important for our health. And I'm quite surprised to hear that because I sort of think of fat as being this completely inert thing that we're carrying around. And I heard you say it's a store of energy. So I've sort of understood that because it's a bit like, you know, when you're eating food, right? We know that fat and carbohydrate are these sort of simple macronutrients. You're saying that it's not as simple as that? It's not. Um, because I think there are so many different ways in which fat is regulated that we don't often pay attention to. Um, so it does store calories, but it also secretes hormones. And I think that the idea that all fat is bad is a misconception. There are fat cells that can be healthy, um, and women tend to have more of those healthy fat cells than men. So even when you were asking your questions, you were utilizing yourself as, you know, in me, I might might have responded differently if she were asking those exact same questions. So, Gosh, that's, that's interesting. So what is healthy fat then? I think healthy fat is the type of fat, I, I love to call it spandex, right? So if you think of a fat cell, it's sort of basically a circle. And a healthy fat cell has the ability to expand when you have extra calories that you're taking in and need to be stored. An unhealthy fat cell is one that I think of as wool. It's a circle, but it's encased in, in, in connective tissue or fibers, and it has no ability to expand. And so all those extra calories, instead of being stored in that fat cell, actually go into your your liver or into your heart, go into places that are not supposed to be, and that's when it becomes very unhealthy. So what changes a healthy fat cell to an unhealthy fat cell and vice versa? Is it reversible? Um, it's not necessarily reversible. It's a great question. But what a healthy fat cell is, is one that has this expandable capacity. And what makes it that way? Estrogen is one of the, the items that actually makes a healthy fat cell healthy. Men have estrogen as well. Oftentimes we forget that men have estrogen. And so it's really the sort of the level of estrogens to testosterone that is so critical. But estrogens make this beautiful, expandable, spandexy like fat cell. And so is body fat the same in males and females? No, it's very different, right? So, and I, I, I like to think back to why that might be. And I think it has to do with the fact that women, when we gain weight, and we have to gain weight in a really, really healthy fashion, our bodies are designed to do that. We store those extra calories in our hips and thighs in these beautiful spandexy like fat cells. Men, on the other hand, store their fat predominantly in their belly area, but the, their the overall design back in the hunter-gatherer days was that the men predominantly were out there chasing the wild game, and so they had to store a little bit of fat so they would have energy to be able to chase or, or you know, bring in the food. Um, and so they would store a little bit of fat in their abdominal area because you could utilize that fat really, really quickly. And so that's where men store fat, where women put it in our hips and thighs. And it's bloody difficult to get rid of from our hips and thighs. But the women's fat is in this really protective area. And then during breastfeeding, we mobilize the calories that are in those fat stores to support the, the calories that we expend for breastfeeding. And so just let me, if I, I just want to make sure I've understood that um, well. You're saying that as a woman, you're storing your fat in an area which you're describing spandex as like it's quite easy to expand this and it's not interfering with any of the organs that are important for my health and that that might be related to things like breastfeeding where you're having to get a lot of calories. I've seen this, right? You get a lot of calories for your um, children. Whereas men are storing this for you know whatever the biological underlying reason might or evolutionary reason might be, they're storing it around um, 
like around their belly, tucked in with all sorts of organs, which I can think of the liver, but I'm sure you can tell me lots of others that are down there. Um, and that that is much more constrained? Yes, exactly. So those fat cells, you wouldn't want them to get too big, right? Because then all of a sudden, well, you see that now in, in aging men, you see big, big bellies, right? That's not what we wanted. We wanted to be able to mobilize a very small amount of extra calories that are stored in those those fat cells um, for hunter-gathering days, right? So, and, and what's really fascinating to me is that if you have a, a male and a female, same age, they both go on the same diet, the man will lose weight faster than the female. Again, because we are designed to gain weight and we hold on to those extra calories as much as we can. And so oftentimes I, I can talk to a man and a woman and they've gone on the diet together and the man will lose weight and all of a sudden he can cinch his belt up a little quicker, um, a little easier. It's like he's moved a notch in his belt where the woman is still struggling because she's still got those hips and thighs. And again, it's really, really difficult to mobilize that. Um, but again, we have to embrace it because those are the really healthy fat cells, the ones that are in our hips and thighs. And so Debbie, you've said how the fat cells are different around your stomach versus your hips and thighs and how men might be able to lose the fat more quickly than females. What about within a female? Where can you lose it from more quickly? Is it more stubborn around the belly because of these differences? It is a little bit more st stubborn, especially as we age, but we'll go with someone who is premenopausal. Um, and so what happens is that typically we love to store, again, the calories in our hips and thighs. But once we've hit storage capacity, such that they've the spandex has expanded as much as it possibly can, then we start to store it in other places, and that's when it starts to go to your belly. Um, and so that's also when it starts to become less healthy. Um, and then again, that's in the premenopausal stage. But so I, I like to think of it as sort of you uh, their storage tanks. So you first fill up your storage tank, which is your hips and thighs, and then once those tanks are completely full, then it starts to shift in women into that belly area. And that's when we have a higher incidence of diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even some cancers. And do we understand why the fat is more unhealthy when it's sort of in the belly and around these organs? I think it's because when those fat cells, if they can't expand, and, and those fat cells are much more like wool, so we can use that analogy, then if they if the fat cells can't expand any further, um, then those extra extra lipid droplets, extra calories, then get stored into the liver, into the heart, into the pancreas. They get stored where they're not supposed to be stored. And also that when those fat cells become full to capacity inside the abdominal area, they become inflamed. I think we've talked, you know, a lot of people talk about inflammation as being bad um, and inflammation within those fat cells inside that abdominal wall. That's when it's really, really bad and very, very unhealthy. Now, why those fat cells become inflamed, I think we're still trying to learn what that looks like. But it's fascinating if, if I were able to actually show you what they, they look like, right? If I, under a microscope, they look different when they're inside the belly versus when they're on their hips and thighs. So having that fat around the belly versus around the hips and thighs means that we're in this state of chronic low-grade inflammation. It also increases our insulin resistance, so it makes us less sensitive to insulin, so we have higher blood sugar peaks, for example, after we eat high-carbohydrate-rich meals as well. Perfect. Absolutely true, right? So those those inflamed, unhealthy fat cells within that abdominal area definitely lead to insulin resistance. Um, all of that extra inflammation leads to changes in a lot of different metabolic uh, syndromes. So yes, absolutely. And it also increases our blood pressure. When people ask me, what's the biggest thing I can do to reduce blood pressure? Should it be that I go on a low sodium diet? We always say, well, first, what's your waist circumference like? Can you lose a bit of the fat around your belly? Why is it that fat around the belly particularly um, is linked with high blood pressure? I think it has to do with probably, again, the storage of those extra little lip lipid droplets, the little fat, and they're probably getting and these around... are little droplets of fat. Yeah, exactly. They're inside the arteries. They're... So so getting rid of that extra little belly fat um, and reducing that level of inflammation will totally improve overall blood pressure. And I agree with you. Blood pressure is one of those things we can't feel, right? You can't feel it when your blood pressure is elevated. And so people who are walking around with elevated blood pressure... People often, we thought it was all directly linked to sodium, but I think that we're finding out more that it that it may not be directly linked to sodium, but that there are other factors that really influence that blood pressure. 
Yeah, in the UK, in the US, the proportion of people are what we call pre-hypertensive. So haven't got a diagnosis of hypertension, have borderline hypertension. Hypertension means high blood, blood yeah. pressure. So they have borderline high blood pressure. They're, that's the point in time where diet, lifestyle uh, and losing weight around the bed is really powerful to improve their health. But most people don't realise that they have high blood pressure or borderline high blood pressure. Well, the other thing I realise is that most people don't necessarily realise is like where their fat is being stored. So I have this personal experience because um, I've actually had a full body scan done in the past, a, a DEXA scan as it's called, which was when I was taking part in the first Zoe Predict studies. And um, this was actually a very depressing experience for me, Debbie, because um, I, you know, I'm I definitely not carrying lots of fat on my thighs or anything. Any of these good places and it generally is like well I don't think I'm carrying very much fat at all I had been putting on a bit of weight this is like from the end of my 30s into my uh, early 40s I did this um, DEXA scan and it turned out that I was carrying quite a lot of weight all in what they call the visceral fat right which is this belly fat area you're talking about nicely layered around you know my liver and my pancreas and various other organs I don't really understand what, what they do and this was a huge shock and also interesting a bit of a shock to the nurse who was doing the scan as well because I think you know she was surprised by how much was there and so um, I guess that's a great example of what you're describing about as a man carrying your fat in the worst possible place but also suggests that um, it's not always obvious it wasn't like I had like lots of visible um, body fat that would make you think that actually I had lots of fat in this really unhealthy place is that is that very unusual? And how can you, um, how can anyone listening to this figure out, you know, what is the reality of their fat distribution? No, I love that because I think that's the, the hidden secret, right? Which is that we don't often know where our body fat is distributed. We utilize in, in health and medicine, we utilize a, a body mass index, BMI, right? And it's this measurement of your height and, and your weight, um, but it doesn't tell you where you're where you're depositing your fat. And so I often find it to be a misnomer because if your BMI, your body mass index is elevated, oftentimes they say, oh, you're unhealthy, but you might not be. You might just be a person who has lots of fat in a really healthy place and you might not be unhealthy. So I think it's, I, I love the the fact that you, you went in and you actually found where your fat was. For you, I would say that's that's scary. That's a scary place to have your fat. And I would really actively get you to do more activity, more aerobic activity, try to get re redistribute that fat. But you you might have a, a genetic predisposition too to to depositing more of your fat there. I've improved my diet a lot since yeah, then. Debbie, so don't I have not him, please. Okay. Don't don't stress I him out. <laughs> but it was definitely one of the things that really motivated me to take this seriously, you know, early on in the time of Zoe, because um, it was a shock and it was very different from what I'd expected. Now, you just um, mentioned about one thing you could do, but just before we go there, to what extent, because if you just look in the mirror, how well does that tell you whether or not you are getting this fat distributed in your belly, which is what you're saying is what you should really be worrying about? Right. I think that the mirror can tell you a little bit about it, but but do that in the buff, right? You have to look at it. Um, but again, I think it's it's just... It's important to love what you're seeing in the mirror, especially if it's still in those hips and thigh areas. I think that that's so incredibly important. So much of the time, we hate our fat when it's in our hips and thighs, and I just really want us to embrace that that's a very healthy place for it to be. I, I do wish that more of us had the ability to go in and get our body scanned so that we could find out exactly where our fat is located. I just had the same experience, and I was I couldn't even believe that, that my muscle mass was so dra dramatically different between my right arm and my left, right? <laughs> I mean, but 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 I think those are so much more informative than than just looking at the number or just looking at a ratio of a number to another number. Um, I, I would love more people to have that opportunity. 